Okay, so now we are continuing to the implementation and how you implement this image analysis. And this will cover the image analysis in the microfluidics. Okay, about the microfluidics, maybe uh, Simona, my colleague, has uh, gave you some uh, insights regarding to this uh, uh, principle, but basically microfluidics will host like uh, two or more uh, immiscible fluid and then or liquid and and you can uh, make a droplets out of it using the emulsions principle and uh, you can encapsulate uh, some other stuff like uh, cells or bacteria or like uh, here it has been used to uh, wide uh, kind of sections from uh, genomics to metabolomics and yeah, uh, you, imaging is one of the most kind of preferred method because uh, every lab has a microscope and sometimes it has uh, some tools to uh, help you with the analysis. And there is just uh, the whole pictures like when you have the image that is captured from the uh, microscope and then you can store it to your hard drive or a server or whatever. And yeah, it's connected uh, usually with the uh, microscope itself. And then from there, uh, you take the image to be uh, to the in, uh, to the computer and then analyze them there. And there are quite many uh, methods that have uh, explained it previously using the modules that is available in uh, software and um, there's some other like uh, people are using machine learning nowadays just to uh, analyze uh, objects or images that they have and yeah just have to I have just have to mention about this one like a specific object may require a specific pipelines so back to your object of interest that uh, uh, does it quite common to detect uh, your object or not? If it's quite common, then you might know or you might get the pipeline already uh, online somewhere, but otherwise you have to construct your own pipeline or workflow. Here's the first example that uh, image analysis is used to uh, analyze uh, digital droplet PCR or polymerase chain reactions that happens in a polydispersed droplets. And you know that uh, this PCR method is used to amplify DNA. And here uh, they use uh, polydispersed droplets that uh, segments the, the, the whole reactions of uh, uh, PCR within a tube. So here uh, in a tube, you won't be just having like one reaction in a bulk, but it is segmented into a droplets so that uh, the droplets contain uh, these DNA template, primers, GNTP, and the polymerase enzyme itself. And here they put the uh, multimodal kind of uh, reactions or like different tags so that uh, when you detect uh, these, DDPCR uh, reaction, you can have different type of droplets. So here there is a green and then yellow and then red. And you can like kind of have uh, different text between the image. I'm sorry, the object. And then uh, at the end, you can just detect the whole image and then see how the uh, PCR reaction works with the different text there. And it is quite useful because you can use this method not just for a PCR but also to detect the antimicrobial heteroresistance, for instance. And uh, because you might uh, also use not just one image but quite many images, so you can uh, perform a high throughput analysis from this one. And usually, yeah, it's used for uh, diagnostic and screening because. As you can see there, we might have like thousands and thousands of uh, droplets and you can also do or uh, 
experiments within a real time. So basically, you can check uh, in a different times and then see what's happened like between one, one time and another. This is the example of a, a real time uh, detections. So there's here the first or like original image and then uh, uh, different frames and other frames that uh, you can just process within uh, a real time and sometimes like uh, these here at all they track uh, from one droplets and travel to like uh, some other uh, distance and it can be measured uh, in the real time, real time as well and they also uh, calculate a different type of cells within the droplets so as you can see here like uh, they have uh, some examples about different type of the cells that they want to uh, track and yeah uh, it can be connected within the uh, the chip itself and usually people do this because it's quite convenient even though like uh, the settings at the beginning it's pretty annoying and it's hard to optimize these uh, system but when it run then you can conveniently uh, get your data and analysis and the third example here is that more about the uh, incubation chamber that uh, these Batik et al use the microfluidic chip to uh, grow these cervical uh, cancer line or like a hello line and and can be embedded directly to the microscope so that you can uh, record or like take images from there and then see and process it later uh, afterwards and it is quite modular yeah i should have uh, mentioned this one previously on the previous examples as well that uh, it's not kind of has to be uh, fit with the microscope or the settings but uh, it can be like interchangeable uh, between one microscope and another so it really depends on the experimental design that you want to have in uh, uh, these image analysis in microfluidics and the more or like complex systems here yeah basically in this example uh, they put the microfluidic device here if you cannot see it and then there are some uh, other uh, sensors that helps uh, them to distinguish between these two types of uh, species euglena gracilis yeah and the last example uh, the microfluidic system can be embedded with the light sheet microscope and as you can see here is that uh, uh, this is the chip and uh, these there's these uh, white field detections and also these uh, light sheet generator that helps you to image these uh, 3d kind of images of your objects so that uh, you can analyze uh, what's happening uh, in your systems yeah that was it like uh, uh, it's the glance of uh, image analysis in a microfluidics and there's there were some uh, examples as well and there are still uh, quite many examples out there that I could not cover in this part mm -hmm.